Hi, I'm Daryl Stetler. I'm the Collinsworth pastor. You're about to hear one of the most talented families that I've ever known. They're not entertainers, they're ministers. Their music and singing will lift your spirit and point you to Jesus. Thank you for joining Phil and Kim and their family for one special evening of worship and praise. Their prayer is that your life will be enriched and you will be blessed as you worship with them. A little more than 16 years ago, God brought together a young man and a young lady, and they formed a team of music ministry that has been marked by excellence and anointing ever since. Whether it's Phil with a trumpet, the girls with the violins, their creative, beautiful family harmony, or Kim's awesome mastery of the piano. Whenever they sing and play and minister, it is marked with excellence, talent, and anointing. It's my privilege tonight to introduce to you our friends, my family. Would you make welcome Phil and Kim Collingsworth.
stand here together as a family we join hands together lifting praises to the father above for sending his son we've chosen together as a family to serve him Knowing nothing else will matter in time. We've made up our minds. Through the heat of the day, we will join in the fight. Till he takes us away, till our faith becomes sign. As for me and my house, we will serve. glad to be here tonight and glad you're here tonight and I want to introduce my children to you and our family to you Brooklyn is 12 she's in the sixth grade and young men she is only 12 and I have a shotgun she might think she's going on 20 uh, we uh, we sang in Pell City Alabama one night and she got done singing went and sat on the front seat here came a 14 year old boy sit on one side and here came a 15 year old boy sit on the other side I looked at them boys real good and I said, boys, I do have a shotgun. <laughs> Courtney's my blondie and she is 11 years old. She's in the fifth grade and oh, she is our family comedian. And also, if you have any straw, uh, stray dogs or cats, please don't let Courtney get near them. She'll bring them home. Philip, can you say hi to everybody? Hello. Oh, Philip is eight now and he is in the second grade. We homeschool the children and all kinds of interesting things happen. And I'm going to give you a little tidbit of something that happened to Philip. <laughs> Kim's been teaching them, the older girls, the states and the capitals, you know. They would call out the states and, uh, and then the capitals and Kim would uh, quiz them on them. Well, she's quizzing them one day and Philip had been listening in. He's just in second grade. Not quite time for him on those yet. Philip's listening in and Kim's calling them out. And she'd say it. Atlanta and he'd say Georgia you know and we get all these different ones he was doing pretty good and she yells out Denver Philip said Broncos <laughs> Indianapolis Colts well Olivia's right down there at the end I'm gonna introduce her special in just a few minutes but one of the greatest privileges we have of singing as a family is the fact that our children get to see God answer prayer firsthand not hear about it not read about it but they've seen it, him answer prayer for us firsthand. And that's what this song is about tonight. Master, come quick. My daughter is dying. The poor father knelt before Jesus 
hearts crying Lord only you can bring healing to a poor dying child and many were filled with fear and with worry cried it's too late there's no need to hurry but Jesus said no it's never too late he's always on lay buried deep in the tomb where he had been carried when Jesus came walking down the street of old Bethany oh well Martha said Lord it's too late don't bother oh, but Jesus prayed to his holy father and Lazarus came forth in power Once again, 
Christ gives reassuring peace all oh, that I am his what a wonder nothing to bring my substance I'd wasted on life's foolish things I wanted 
forgiveness and freedom from sin. I knelt before the Savior and I said to Him, I'll furnish the man if you'll furnish the grace. Give me your hand, let me look on your face. I'll do what you bid me, your will I'll embrace. I'll furnish the man, if you'll furnish the grave. never failed me, not even one time. He's kept all his promises, I've tried to keep mine. Oh, Lord, I can't make it, but God has a plan. It's unmerited favor for me. Sometimes I'm tested, sometimes I'm tried, sometimes it seems something's broken deep inside. But when it seems I can't stand anymore, it's then he pours out his spirit. All my faith to restore. He'll furnish all the grace you need if you'll furnish the man. Give him your heart, then he'll take your hand. Just do what he bids you and follow his plan. Furnish the grace if you'll furnish the man. Oh, just do what he bids you and follow his plan. He'll furnish the grace if you'll furnish the called Wilmot, Ohio. Anybody ever heard of Wilmot? Anybody ever heard of the Amish Door Restaurant? Some of you look like you might have eaten there before. Anyways, we sang there one Thursday night. Girls brought their violins and they played them. A fellow walked up at me when we were done. He said, where'd they get them violins? I said, well, we rented them from the school rental system over in Cincinnati when we were living at the time. And he said to me, I thought so. They sounded like cheap violins. <laughs> I said, you know something about violins, don't you? He said, yeah, I build them for a living. I'm a master violin builder. Oh, I said, you kind of do know something. Well, to make a long story short, that was Thursday. On Saturday, we went to his shop. He wanted the girls to tour his shop, see his shop. I picked up his brochure. Blue light starting special price, $5,000 a piece. He knew a cheap one when he heard it. That it was only $436 to buy the rental ones, you know. So I said to him, Roger, now I don't need a Stradivarius for the symphony. These girls are just getting started. What would be a good violin for these girls? Well, he said, Germany has quite a line of them made in Germany that are $1,500 a piece. And he said, they're great student quality violins. And I did that math times two pretty quick. Decided I wasn't writing the check that Saturday, you know. Well, we finished the tour and uh, it, the girls were fascinated. It was wonderful. We were getting ready to leave. We had our coats on, we had to sing across town, and he said, oh, well, don't leave yet. He said, hang on just a minute. Uh, 
The Lord spoke to me Thursday night when those girls played on those junky violins. And he said, you've got a shop full of beautiful violins and these kids are playing on cheap junk. He said, I got two beautiful violins right there. He closed the cases, zipped them up and handed them to the girls. He said, take them home. They're a gift. Well, what would you have said? Old Courtney grinned with every tooth in her head and she said, thank you. Here's a great old gospel song you'll recognize. That heaven came down, glory filled my soul. get to introduce look who I get to introduce can you say hi to everybody Olivia Olivia is four years old and life is really exciting when you got red hair and you got a red-headed baby doll we saw Annie in a little craft store and we left without her at first didn't we she said to me but daddy she has red hair. So guess what daddy did? He went back and got Annie. And you got Annie tonight, don't you? Have you got something you're going to sing for us tonight? Well, lots of exciting things happen when you have a four-year-old in your group. One night her tights fell down on the first song. One night she danced on the first song. And when we got done, she was still dancing. We'd forgot the bathroom break. Lots of exciting things happen, but God has something special for a little gal. She's going to sing about it. Yeah. 
I got one more I'm going to talk her into tonight. This was my Father's Day gift last year. Now, it's a few, it's a few weeks past Father's Day or maybe a few weeks before. But this is a, so special. Olivia's got to do it just for me tonight, and you'll figure out why. Let me tell you a quick little story. Somebody over here wanted Kim to play Joshua. She's going to do that in just a minute. I tell you what, we were singing one Sunday at North Vernon, Church of the Nazarene. Matter of fact, they're pastors here tonight. And on Wednesday of that week, we had to send a tape to our producer, Roger Talley, in Morristown, Tennessee, to let him know what the arrangements were going to be like on a new album we did last spring. Five trumpet solos, five piano solos. Well, I had my five done, arranged, recorded, ready to go. And Kim had four of the five done. But here we were on Sunday, and on Wednesday, she had to turn that tape in. We had to mail it. She says to me Sunday morning, as soon as the concert's over, what am I going to do? I'm not for sure what for sure I want to do. I can't decide between a couple songs. And I said, I know what you're going to do. Well, she got nervous right then. I said, you're going to play Joshua Fit the Battle of Jericho. She kind of got this blank look, and she said, I don't know that song, and I don't think I like it. Now, that makes a lot of sense, don't it? I said, baby, we're going to learn it this afternoon. So they have a beautiful grand piano just like this at North Vernon Nazarene, and I sat on the front seat, and she sat on the piano bench all afternoon. Now, the problem with that, I was trying to teach it to her, and I can't play the piano. That's like a little problem, you know. So I, we got the harmonies and the melody, and we got all the chord structures and got it all done, and she said, well, so what? This is nothing. I said, but think of that story. Think of that story and the miracle that God brought through their obedience. So she said, well, let's see if we can do something with it. Well, it was time for the Sunday night concert. We finished the concert, went home, put the children to bed, and it was Monday morning. We woke up. I said to her, now today, sweetheart, I'm going to do the dishes. I'm going to fold the clothes, and I'm going to fix lunch, and I'm going to fix supper. And she said, of all the things, she said, what's wrong? What did she ask that for? I said, I'm going to be Mr. Mom, and you and Joshua are going to march all day. She said, I knew there was a method in your madness. Well, they made a little progress that day, but not a whole lot. Now, remember, the first six days when they marched, they marched quietly. That's all she got done on Monday, just the quiet marches. She came to bed very late, about 2.30 in the morning. I was sound asleep and woke up, and she said, I can't do it. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't have it ready. I said, it only took one day to get the walls down. Baby, you got another day to go. So Tuesday all day, I was Mr. Mom. I folded the clothes and put them away, and we've never found them since. <laughs> and she and Joshua marched, but when she came to bed at 1.30 in the morning, she said, I got it. And I set up with a start. I said, you got what? She said, we got the walls down, and you'll notice that. <laughs>
I forgot to tell you all, not, some of you know this, we left the state of Ohio about seven months ago and we moved to the wonderful, beautiful, heavenly state of Kentucky. Yeah. And you'll never believe where we live. Rabbit hash Kentucky. It's had a little bit of effect on us, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. When I claim that mountain that the Lord gave to me. That the Lord gave to me. They can't do that no more. That's enough of that song. That's no, no more of that song. We sang in Camden, New York just a few weeks ago, and... Uh, that's enough of that song, baby. One of the things we like to do when we go into church is we get a chance, we like to look at the pastor's library. And the pastor at Camden, New York had a fantastic book by John Orkberg. It said, if you want to walk on the water, you got to get out of the boat. Man, that's a lot of truth, isn't it? You all have heard the messages just like I have about the poor apostle Peter. He shouldn't have taken his eyes off of Jesus. He wouldn't have gone under. What about those 11 fellas that never got their big toe wet? They're sitting back there comfortable in the boat. Kim found a song. She said, we've got to sing that. Because too many of us Christians have become pew potatoes. We're comfortable to sit. Let the preacher do it. When there's a world living all around us that know nothing about the gospel and are dying without Jesus Christ. I want you to listen as Kim sings for you. Are you cruising along, taking an ease while others go astray? Sometimes too busy to lend a hand to a neighbor. Tell them about salvation's plan Or do you leave it all up to the preacher man Get out of the boat and start walking on the water Get out of the boat and start walking on the water coming on and the workers are so few now are we warm in the seat at the place where we meet do we take the time to pray for the man who opens God's holy book to be given the words to say do we blame ourselves if the church isn't full then start moving for Jesus and carrying the load get out of the boat and start walking on the water get out of the boat and start walking on the water It's coming on and the workers are so few. Now are you warm in the seat 
at the place where you meet? Do you take the time to pray for the man who opens God's holy book to be given the words to say? Do we blame ourselves if the church isn't full? Then start moving for Jesus and carry in the And start walking on the water. Get out of the boat and start walking on the water. Up on the shore, oh, there's plenty of work. Oh 
Yes, lady, and you've given up on life. I have some advice just, just for, for you. you. Our God is still in the miracle business, and he knows your situation is quite good. And when you feel your faith scrape the bottom of your other family members and that's uh, a great privilege for us tonight and a few weeks ago we were in Hope Sound Florida singing and I had asked my husband I said you know we're gonna do this live video and Mother's Day is coming up up soon and I said you know it'd be so nice if we could write a song something original for our moms well he kind of looked at me and said well that sounds like a nice idea and that was the end of it and he's kind of got to be inspired to write something so we were on our way home from Hope Sound, and I was driving, and he was tired, so he was sleeping. The kids were all quiet, and I was just kind of talking to the Lord. And I said, Lord, would you please help my husband to be able to write a song for this event? Give him something. And um, as I was writing, I was just talking, I mean, thinking, I was talking to the Lord, and just like somebody threw a brick and hit me right in the head, just words started coming that fast and I am not a songwriter and I'll tell you that right now I can put music to about anything but I can't do very good with lyrics so uh, I was praying for my husband to get a song and the Lord started giving me one so I stopped into a pulled into a holiday inn got the kids in bed locked myself in the bathroom about 1130 at night and tried to remember everything that had come to my mind and uh, I said to Phil I'd had the song partly finished and I said now listen I didn't know your mom way back when and I can't really write a verse for her what, what's something you really remember about your mom that sticks out in your mind and without hesitation he said to me oh he said I remember I would get up very early before I was old enough to go to school and she would get my dad off to work and get my two sisters off to school she'd come back through the kitchen go in the living room and kneel down at the couch he said every morning and he said, I was so little, and I knew she was praying, that he said, I would climb up on her back as she would pray. I thought that was kind of a neat thought. And the interesting thing about that was, one of the first things that came to my mind about my mother was, there was a little keyhole in their door, bedroom door, that us kids would peek in there sometimes. And I can remember on many different occasions, peeking through that keyhole about mid-morning, and seeing my mom kneeling at the bed or walking the floors and tears streaming down her face. And she was praying for all nine of us kids. Now, if that doesn't make an impression on a little child, I don't know what will. 
Other things, when you have difficulties in your family, they seem to kind of fade in the background when you know that mama is praying. And that was the, one of the first memories that came to me. And so, mom, you didn't know this, and you're supposed to be in Michigan tonight in the hospital with my sister while she's having a baby tonight. But dad got you here on purpose. And mom, Collingsworth, you didn't know this either, but this song is just for you, and y'all can kind of listen in if you want. But uh, this is for my mom and Phil's mom tonight. My mama taught me all the things a little girl should know. She gave me everything I'd need to blossom and to grow. I had four brothers in the house, four sisters just the same. And when it came to simple things, she'd call us each by name. And she told us all the same. She'd say, it's not in things that you can or things that you can hold that bring contentment in your life and joy down in your soul. It's in giving up on your own wishes and letting God have your ambitions. Mama, you're a priceless gem. You taught me to give my all to Him. My mind goes back to early days when I was just a chap. Each morning you would kneel to pray, and I'd climb on your back. I saw those tears run down your face. I heard you pray we'd all be saved by grace. You didn't know it then, but let me tell you while you're here. Oh, I got the message loud and clear. I never had a doubt or fear. And this is what I heard you say. Son, it's not in things that you can buy or things that you can hold that bring contentment in your life and joy down in your soul. It's in giving up on your own wishes and letting God have your ambitions. Mama, you're a priceless gem. You taught me to give my all to Him. And it seems like only yesterday We left your nest, ran out to play In this world of choices It seemed we heard your voices Saying give your all Give your all He won't let I 
priceless gem. Mama, you're a priceless gem. You taught us to give our all to Him. amazing that God would love us. Kim, I want you to play, I think, the greatest hymn nearly ever written, John Newton's old song, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. <laughs> 